This is part 12 of the basic Python programming tutorial for new and intermediate Blender users. I'm using version 2.63a. And so in the previous lessons, of course, we were moving these objects around and the vertices within the mesh around. And in this case, instead of just, uh, we were cycling through all the objects in the scene right here, cycle through all the objects in the scene. But in this case, instead, what we're going to do is we're going to cycle through the objects and just change the object that we want to change based upon the name because before we didn't really care about what name it was it was just picking up each one so sometimes you don't want to operate on all the objects so what I've done in here I took this current object up here and I just put it up here though I'm still not using it at the moment I just put it outside of the loop so for the moment we'll just comment it out and then down in here um, so I've assigned object.name we're getting the object as we go through all the objects and the, the name of the object is object.name that's how you access the object and I've assigned that to a string value called string1 alright so, and the reason is because I'm going to use a string function essentially to be able to find out what the name of that object is and if it's a certain object then I'm going to operate on it so I say compare the object name to the word cone and here's the string function this is actually it right in here it's string string one dot find alright that's the, the way you actually use it and then the parameters there's three parameters I only need two right now but I'm trying to find the word cone whatever's in within the parentheses and the zero represents the zero index so the beginning of the string I'm starting my search from the beginning when you search through this function if it's not equal to negative one this is the not equal sign exclamation point followed by equals so I'm comparing it to this. I'm saying if it's not equal to negative 1, well, negative 1 is going to be the return value returned by this string find function. And if, the, if it returns negative 1, it means it has not found it. That's why I'm saying if not, if it's not equal to negative 1. So really what it means is if, it's, if it is equal to, so if it's, if it's not equal to negative one, means if it's a positive value, means it's factually found the string. So if it's found the string, then do everything within it. So, <clears throat> so I say, uh, I have here. You have to watch out here. I say print the object name and location. This is not on a separate line here. You have to watch out sometimes right here. See, I have word wrap turned on, like this. So that'll throw you. You have to be aware of that because. If I just move this over here, you can see it's part of that whole line. So I print the name and the object location. Then I pick up the data, the mesh data, and I continue on like we did before. I cycle through all the vertices, but I only use, I only look at the first vertex within the mesh data. And then I update the mesh, display it onto the screen, and I increment the location of the object by five like we did before just looking for the cone so anything that has this cone theoretically anything that starts with cone because I'm starting at a zero index should get picked up and modified and okay let's run it let's see what actually happens so we run the script and there we go so instead of picking up only instead of picking up the ecosphere and the cube as well it only picked up the cone so let's actually verify to see if this actually works for all objects because I'm saying starting at the zero index anything that starts basically there at the C and has the word cone in it so we could we'll copy this we'll just let me open this up just a little bit and I'll make it its own little object here I, I typically even the habit of doing this I'll do shift DX I'll make a copy here shift DX make a copy there for those three like this. All right, then we'll look at them from over here. Can't really see its cone. All right. So a lot of times when I make a copy, I always press the U key. Yes, and I change it to single user because a lot of times that's what I really want. You don't always have to have it that way, but I'm in a habit of doing it, so I am going to do it in this case. And then, so when we run it, since this is now cone.002, and that's cone.00, I mean, that's 001002, theoretically it should pick them all up and modify the mesh within each one. Let's try it. Let's see, Alt P to run it. And it does. So, and if we do it again, you should see this extend even further 
and do it again whoops in the wrong menu wrong window alt p and there it does again so you can see the uh mesh is getting extended further each time like that but let's just for grins let's we'll just change this thing for the moment so it shrinks the mesh down by negative three and instead let's try renaming this let's bring up the menu n here and I'll call it I don't know just call it new cone it doesn't matter all I'm doing it is making sure that cone is in the middle of the string because I'm starting my search at the zero location within the string so theoretically it should pick up this one as well let's run it alt p and it still does but however let's try and leave it behind this time instead start the index at let me see if that's that's at zero that's one two three let's start it at four let's st starting the search at the zero I mean at the O in this string so it probably will not find that second one well it should not okay and we'll run that alt P what, what do I do said uh, did I do it? Alt P. Alt. Didn't do it. All right, let me go look at the uh, window. See if I have an error. New cone. Dot zero zero one location. Well, it says it found the new location. Cone. It found it where I'm printing it. All right, let's see. But it's not moving any of them. Should have moved the other two. Oh no, of course it's not going to move the other two because it's <laughs> no, because the other one started zero. Oh, program error. So we'll put it back at two. And so now what it should do, it should start the search zero, one, two. It start, should start the search at W in this case or at zero, one, two, at N in this case. So it should not pick up that one and that one. And it should pick up this one. All right. So Alt P. All right. There we go. So that kind of gives you an idea of how the string search function works because then you can just scan through the scene and find whatever object you want based on the name that, it's, that it has that you either gave it when you put it in the scene or that you programmatically put it. In fact, I think we'll do that in the next lesson. As we add objects to the scene, we'll name them and then we can pick them up how we want. Okay, well, that's it for this lesson and I'll see you in the next lesson.